We're pottering in the greenhouse today on Pots and Trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. Well, I'm in the greenhouse today simply because the weather outside over the last week or so has been absolutely torrential rain and the ground is really, really soggy. It's almost stopped raining, it's showery, but it's certainly too wet to do anything in the garden. So I thought I'd come and do just a little bit of tidying up in the greenhouse because I overwinter a range of different plants in here and it's quite a big greenhouse. So what I don't do is put any heat on unless I'm absolutely forced to. And most of the things that I've got in here will stand fairly low temperatures, but they won't stand any frost. So it's usually possible to keep plants in a cold, unheated greenhouse frost free if you carry out a few different measures. Now it's been very dull, it's been very damp, not good growing weather for plants at all. So this is the time of the year when they don't look particularly good. But as long as you can keep them ticking over, then come the spring when the weather warms up and the day lengths increase, they'll start to grow. So I've got all sorts of things in here. I've got things like the Mullenbeckia. Um, these that make really good trailing plants for outdoor summer containers. Um, and these are from New Zealand, um, pretty tough actually. They will stand outside, but a little bit of protection is good. I've also got some aspidistras, um, and again, normally grown as a house plant, but I know some people are growing these outside, certainly in the south of England where it's more sheltered. So in the cold greenhouse, these are fine. I'm gonna use these again in outdoor containers. I've got some Tradescantia, stock plants that I'll take cuttings off, uh, echeveris. So these are more or less all stock plants. But what I want to do is to just to go through them and have a tidy. For example, on these echeverias here, so these are a, a succulent, fairly tough, but not hardy. But you can see that this damp weather has caused these lower leaves on these lovely rosettes to go all moldy. So what I need to do is very carefully is go in there and get rid of all of these mouldy leaves. Um, and the idea is the compost should be fairly dry. Now this compost that I bought these at the end of the show season, and they're in a, a quite moisture retentive, we'll just get a little bowl to put that rubbish in, in quite a moisture retentive compost. But what I will do when I put these into containers for the summer, I will put them in a really gritty free draining compost. So, I think they've been grown in the wrong compost that's holding the moisture. So I certainly won't water these. Now, it looks a bit drastic doing that, but that will let the air get into them and they'll send out side shoots. So they will be perfectly fine come the weather when it starts to dry up a little bit. Same with this pelagonium. I've got various pelagoniums in here. This one is a, a stellar pelagonium. I haven't cut it down. And what I'll do with this in the spring when it makes a flush of new growth is take some cuttings off it. So I literally just want to keep it ticking over. And it happens at this time of the year, if you're overwintering them somewhere cold, you get all these yellow leaves. So again, what we need to do, I am not throwing these on the floor, by the way, they are going into a bucket, um, is to get rid of them because these are a, potential source for fungal infection. It's even trying to flower. Look, here we are, you know, first week of January and it's trying to flower. So we want to take any flower buds off. We don't want it to use energy on those. Um, so yes, we don't want any fungal diseases on there. So again, I would spend five minutes really picking over that and making sure that we get all the dead leaves off the surface. Now, the compost in there, is fairly dry. I can, you can see it, it's only just moist, which is how we want it to be. We don't want wet, soggy compost. Pelagonians will stand the cold much better if the compost is dry. So I probably haven't watered these since about October time. Um, so I'm gonna work my way along the bench, tidying up the stock plants. They've got air flowing around them, which means that they're not gonna get too humid. It's really bad on days like this, of course, because it's really sort of moisture in the air. Um, what I do have in the greenhouse is a maximum minimum thermometer, which is just here. And a maximum minimum thermometer will record the highest and the lowest temperature over a given period. So I tend to zero it every morning. So I come in, I can see how cool it got in the night. And then by the following day, I can see how warm it got in the day. And that way you can check on everything and make sure it's fine. So that's over there. I can see that at the moment it's 8.9 degrees Celsius in here and it got down to about 6.5 last night. 
This is the only bit of heating that I'm using at the moment. This is a, a soil um, sand bench here. So it's just a homemade box that I made. Um, it's got sand in the bottom if I just lift these two plants out. So it's got a layer of sand. There is some insulation in the bottom. And then if I dig down, there are some soil warming cables and they're really warm to touch now. And what that does, they're about every sort of four to six inches apart in a zigzag throughout there, really, really low. I think it's only 60 watts to run that, so very economical to run. And it gives a lovely warm bed of sand. It can be controlled with this thermostat, so it's clicking off at about, I think, 18 degrees centigrade. And it just gives that little bit of base heat, um, which just, again, on cold days, gives that bit of frost protection. So in this little bit here, I've got things that need that little bit more warmth. These are some houseplant cuttings that I took in the autumn of some Monstera. Again, any leaves that aren't particularly good, I will take off. Um, but I've got cuttings of Plectranthus and some Peperoma and some little fern uh, plants growing in there that just need that little bit of extra warmth. So this gives them that bit of protection as well. And then what I do again with this, I will go through it and I'm going to pick off any leaves off the pelargoniums like this. Just pinch them off. Um, I also got my streptocarpus in here. And these again are fine if you keep them frost free. But what I've got here are the re remains of last year's uh, flower stalks. Now sometimes they will pull out but if not just get a little pair of snips and just snip all of that old out and just tidy it up. And again this one is still trying to produce a flower bless it. We don't want that to happen. We want the energy to go into making nice roots and, and a good strong plant for the spring. So it's just a case of a little bit of time snipping them out. All right, it takes a few minutes. I'm not going to finish that, uh, but I will come back and do it all. Uh, pelargonium that was cut down uh, in the autumn, making new growth. So just to tidy through, really, just to make sure we've got no dead foliage on there. When it comes to watering, only minimal watering. Um, on that bench, virtually nothing at all until it gets bone dry. And certainly uh, I've got to let the echeverias dry out. These dry out a little bit faster because they've got that bit of base heat continually. So what I would do with these is just uh, occasionally fill the compost and if it's a little bit dry, give them just a, a drop or two of water. But what I do do is water the sand because the sand dries out quickly. And if we keep the sand moist, that seems to spread the heat more evenly than if it's dry. It acts as sort of a conductor of the heat. So I do perhaps once a week go through with the little watering can, just making sure that the sand bed is kept constantly moist and then we get that lovely bit of heat. And finally, if the weather forecast tells me that it's going to get down to probably you know, lower than four degrees. That isn't freezing, but I then I think, well, I'll just give them that little bit of extra protection. So I have my fleece. And what I do is I come in uh, late afternoon and I just drape the fleece over and just tuck it down the back. And it's amazing how much extra heat that includes. Sometimes I bring a second thermometer in and underneath the fleece, I usually put two layers on, it can be about three degrees warmer than in the open air. So it really is worth doing. And I just drape it over all of them to give them that little bit of protection, tuck them in down the edges, and then I can fold it back on itself and give them a double layer. And that just tucks them up nice and cozy for the night. And usually I'll take it off then the following morning. But if it's a spell of cold weather, and I think we have actually got some cooler weather forecast over the coming week where we're going to get a bit more frost, I'll often leave that on. It's not going to harm the plants if they're covered with this fleece for several days. I wouldn't leave it on permanently, but certainly several days is fine because there is still quite a surprising amount of light getting underneath there with the plants. If you look at that, Jill, have a look under there and see how light it is. It reflects the light, so it's nice and light. So they're going to do absolutely fine, but it just gives them that little bit of extra protection. And an extra degree or two can make all the difference between success and failure.
Well, thank you for watching and don't forget you can watch all the videos that we've done on YouTube and we've also got our weekly podcast that you can get from your normal provider. I'd like to go home from an English country garden where I've been mowing for, say, eight hours on the right. The whole thing gets tied together as tight as you can. Next week, weather permitting, we're going to be in the garden pruning the blueberries. So we'll see you then. Bye.